Alright, welcome to our third lesson on biological molecules. So in the last lesson, we talked about carbohydrates. And in this one, we're going to continue talking about proteins and fats. And we're going to make a start with fats, right? The nutrient that everyone is even more fearful of than carbohydrates. Now, for all their bad reputation, fats actually have very useful functions in the body, which we'll be looking at. So similar to carbohydrates, we'll need to look at the elements uh, in fats, the structure of fats, and also what functions they play in the body. And you'll find this on your textbook, page 60 to 62. Uh, so here on the left, you see some examples of fats, or what we call lipids. Now, what do you notice about the elements which are found inside fats? Just look at some of these fats. Right, so there's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, what do you notice about the amount of hydrogen compared to oxygen? Well, it's different, right, from in carbohydrates. So in carbohydrates, remember that it was 2 is to 1. Well, in fats, there is a lot less oxygen in proportion to hydrogen. Right here, for example, 32 hydrogen, but only 2 oxygen. So a lot less oxygen compared to hydrogen. So what is the structure of fats? Well, here is a fat molecule. And you can see, what is it made out of? One fat molecule is made out of one glycerol and three fatty acids. Right? And every fatty acid is attached uh, to the glycerol. So this fat molecule can actually be broken down by hydrolysis. Remember what hydrolysis is? Using water to break down. So to break down this molecule of fat, I actually need three water molecules. Right? One each water molecule for each bond between fatty acid and glycerol. So that's one bond, two bond, three bonds, and I need three water molecules to break down. And the enzyme that helps in hydrolysis is lipase. And with that, we can actually break down fat into one glycerol and three fatty acids. So just remember what fats are made out of. Uh, so what are the functions of fats, uh, besides making you look ugly? Uh, well, they are a source of energy, okay, but they are not an immediate source of energy, right? Not like carbohydrates. Uh, rather, they are a longer-term store of energy, okay? Longer-term store, uh, which is also what makes them very hard to lose from your belly. Uh, fats are also a component of the cell surface membrane of cells, so it's a major component of the membrane. Uh, fats are also a solvent for certain vitamins, such as vitamin E, if I'm not wrong, you can go look this up, and vitamin D. So these are the vitamins that can be resolved and stored in fats. And finally, uh, fats are also used in synthesizing and making some uh, hormones. So for instance, uh, in girls uh, and boys as well, but in girls more, uh, estrogen, right, that is a hormone that is synthesized from fats. And finally, for the favorite slide of, of this entire video, fats are an insulating material that helps to reduce heat loss, so they help keep you warm. Uh, so like in baby seals, or seals in general living in Arctic with lots of fats. Uh, and also, it helps to be maybe a bit fatter in colder countries where it helps you to keep and store uh, heat and reduce heat loss. Now, what are some sources of fats? Uh, foods high in fats, uh, so like cheese, butter, but you find it quite surprising as well that you find fat in certain plants like the avocado, and nuts and seeds also have lots of good and better fats. Now if you want to go further with this topic, I can challenge you, go look up what the difference is between saturated fat and unsaturated fat. Now, in general, people think that unsaturated fats are uh, better for your health, uh, and there's a reason for that. And there's also this uh, new fat that has been being talked about recently, like trans fat. So you can also go further and, and take a look at what uh, these types of fat mean. And hint is that it has something to do with the fatty acid chains. So finally, let's look take a look at proteins. Right. So again, you need to know the elements, the structure, uh, and the functions of proteins. And you can find this in textbook page 63. To 66. Uh, proteins are a very important part of our diet and uh, there is this disease called Kwashiorkor 
if you see a lot of these pictures of very uh, poor uh, children in countries where they don't get enough food, so it causes your belly to swell up. Uh, it's not because they're very full, but rather it's because they actually lack uh, the protein in their diet. So protein is very important for us. And one of the important things that always gets tested uh, is the fact that proteins are a nutrient that contain nitrogen. All right, so, so far, fats and carbohydrates, we've seen that it contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But proteins also contain nitrogen. And you can remember that by, by remembering that protein, the word protein actually has the, the letter N in it. Right, so nitrogen is found in protein. So what is the structure of proteins? Uh, well, proteins and polypeptides uh, are large molecules which are made up of many amino acids joined together. So you can imagine every one of these circles is an amino acid and they're joined together. And they're joined together by what? What do you think? What's the reaction that joins molecules together? Right, they're joined together by condensation. And the bonds between amino acids, like here and here, these are what we call peptide bonds. Okay, so they're kind of bond called peptide bonds. Now you might be wondering, what is the difference between protein and polypeptide? Now both of them are large molecules made out of many amino acids. But in general, people would say that proteins are, are long, the longest, you know, the largest kind of amino acid chains. Polypeptides are a bit smaller, but they're still quite long. So proteins are the largest, then polypeptides. Uh, then of course you have your amino acids, single unit amino acids. So just a slight extension to talk about amino acids. But there are 20 types of amino acids in humans. So here are just three examples, glycine, alanine, valine. Doesn't matter their names. But just take a look at their structure. What do you observe? Well, you might have observed that there is this part here that all of them have. And then there's this part here as well, which all of them have. And finally, there's this blue part here, right, which is a bit different in all of them. So the, the structure of each amino acid okay, is that an amino acid actually has this amino group. It has an acid group. That's why it's called amino acid. And what makes each amino acid different or unique is its side chain, which is different for each amino acid. Alright, but that's, this is not uh, super important in the syllabus, but what you do need to know is that a protein is made out of many amino acids joined together. So if you can't get anything from these slides, just remember that protein is made out of many amino acids joined together. Alright, and furthermore, Okay, proteins are not just a long chain of amino acid, you know, that's just a straight chain like this. No, actually, each chain of amino acids actually fold together in a very special way so that proteins have a three-dimensional shape. So, it could, it's just a long chain to begin with, but it can fold together to become something that looks like this, uh, such that every protein has a unique three-dimensional structure and shape. And this will come in very importantly in enzymes because every enzyme has a unique three-dimensional shape which is important for its function. Okay, so just remember every protein has a unique three-dimensional shape because the chain of amino acids folds up together in a special unique way. Uh, so where do you think we can get protein from in our diet? Is it only found in meat? Well, it can't be, right? Because how do vegetarian people get their protein? So You'd be surprised to know that proteins can also be found in many plants. So for instance, uh, even broccoli, cauliflower, um, and also in mushrooms. Uh, so these are some other sources of proteins which are not commonly mentioned. So what are the functions of proteins? Well, if you take a look here at this photo of me, right, you'll see that proteins can be used to synthesize new protoplasm. Right, for instance, new cells in your muscle tissue, so it helps you to make more uh, muscle tissue. Uh, it helps you to grow uh, and repair your tissue. So that's why a lot of these uh, bodybuilders, right, they take protein shake and like amino with different amino acids because it helps them to synthesize new tissue. Right. Secondly, uh, proteins 
are used in the synthesis or the making of enzymes, right? Enzymes are made out of proteins and also hormones. Some hormones uh, like insulin, for example, are actually proteins. So we need proteins, otherwise we have no enzymes in our body and no hormones uh, and we can't function properly. So for instance, enzymes uh, are found in our digestive system, uh, which, are used, which is used to digest the food that we eat. And finally, proteins are also used to make antibodies, to synthesize antibodies, which are very important in the defense of our body against harmful organisms. So this white blood cell here uh, makes antibodies, and you can see that they actually bind to germs, and in a sense, it disables the germs. So antibodies are also uh, made up of proteins. All right, so with that, we've actually had a look at carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Right? We've looked at the elements that make them up. We've looked at their structure, right? the different types of each nutrient. And we've also looked at their functions. So I would like you to actually uh, look at your notes and complete the summary table uh, just to make sure that you've got it. Okay, so this really ends this lesson. And in the next lesson, uh, we'll be looking at food tests. Right, so now that we've known the properties of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, how can we test for the presence of them uh, in different foods? Right, we'll be looking at that in the next lesson. Alright, see you.